What is going on, beautiful people? It is your favorite mentally ill podcast, YouTube host, Lee Hammock, a.k.a. Mr. Mental Illness himself, with today's new mental health episode. Um, if, if you're new to my channel, I am a person that's diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder. Um, this story is just telling my, this channel is about telling my story, telling about my life, my experiences, and to offer you the perspective. Um, the very rare perspective inside the head of someone who is a self-aware narcissist. Um, so today's episode is going to be about when I first meet you, like my first impressions, how I react to when I first meet somebody. So it's kind of weird how my mind works. So when I first meet people, I'm always like men, women, um, romantically, non-romantically, it's all kind of the same. Um, when I first meet you, it's more along the lines of like, intel like intelligence gathering and things like that is more along the lines of trying to figure you out from head to toe from what makes you tick what you like what you don't like and things like that so i'm going to go into the, the relationship side of things first because i think i think people um are extremely interested in that you know <clears throat> people want to know like the red flags or how a narcissist will react on like a first date or first meeting someone. So me personally, um, when I first meet somebody, like nowadays, you know, everything is so social media like centered. Like you don't, you rarely, like I feel like you more likely to meet somebody online on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or something like that. You're more likely to meet them online first as opposed to meeting them in person. So as a narcissist, meeting somebody online is extremely, you know, it's easier. It's like a lot easier to get to know people, to get to know what makes people tick. Because before you reach out to somebody, you can actually study them for a very long time. You can watch their online profile. You can see what they like and what they don't like. Um, you can see what type of music they like. So you can, like, <laughs> it's going to sound messed up, but like I've done this before where I've seen people's favorite songs. So I've changed those, I've changed my ringtone to somebody's favorite song. So when I meet them, and somebody calls me, your favorite song is what? And you're like, oh, I like that song. I'm like, me too. That's my favorite song, you know? I want you to think that we, like, when I first meet you, I've studied you so much online. I know, like, I know what makes you tick. I love it, you know? So when I first meet you, we can sweep you off of your feet. Like, literally sweep you off of your feet. Make you so happy and feel just full of love and energy and joy because you, you like, in your head, you're thinking, like, I've met somebody I've never felt this way before. Like, he just gets me. And, like, we, we really do get you, you know what I mean? Because we've studied you for so long. Like, like I said, online is so easy because you put, you, nowadays people put everything that, they, everything that they're looking for online, everything that they're looking for in a man or a woman or a significant other, they put it online for you to see. It's, like, up for grabs. It's there for you to see. So you get it, you study it. So when you meet somebody, it's like you know, you know what makes them tick. Like I think a lot of people get confused to the point where they think narcissists are so self-centered and so about us, like we're so much, everything is about us so much so that people um, don't realize that when I first meet you, it's all about you. We, I, I will try my best to learn literally everything that I can about you in general, in person, and things like that, just so that I can know what makes you laugh, so I can make you cry, I want to know what makes you cry, so I can make you laugh, I want to know what makes you tick, because when I get, like, it's not like, I don't think it's intentional to the point, it's like subconsciously conscious, you know, you do, you know you're doing it, but you don't know why you're doing it, I don't know why I'm gathering all this intel, I just want to make you happy, you know what I mean, it's not to like, I think people think narcissists go out here, and some of them do, but like, I think people think all narcissists go out here and just hunt people to hurt them, you know? Like, he meant the love bombing wasn't real. Like, when I love bomb somebody, it's love bombing because it's the stuff that they like, it's the stuff that they enjoy, you know what I mean? And I actually like doing it. I actually like giving them that that feeling and making them happy and stuff like that. It makes me happy. Like, why do I waste so much time, effort, and energy into breaking somebody down that I don't care about, you know what I mean? So, I actually think love bombing is, like, real. I don't know I'm kind of going off everywhere. I'm going to get better at this, y'all. Just kind of bear with me for this first few episodes. But it's just, like, crazy. Like, first date is all about you. I want to know 
how your relationship with your parents was. I want to know how you grew up. I want to know who your best friend is and what kind of beef y'all have had. I want to know everything there is to know about you. And I'm going to hardly give you anything about me. Like, you might not realize it, but, like, when you leave that first date or that first encounter, you might not know nothing about me. <laughs> the only thing you'll know about me will be the similarities to you, to the stuff that you've told me. Like, yeah, I can agree with that. Like, my my dad was the same way. My mom was the same way. Tell me, like, what are you, like, what are your, what are your goals? What are your dreams? Like, tell me more. Like, I'm just so interested in you. So when I love, like, so I get get what I need. Sometimes people just do it because they want to sleep with you. You know what I mean? But a lot of times, people, not a lot of times, like sometimes they do it because they actually want to be in a relationship with you. Narcissists want to feel like normal human beings too. So we want to do what we can to be in a relationship. Like, I want to be normal. I've always wanted to feel, no. I've always wanted to feel like a normal human being. Like, I want to feel normal. So I need to get in a relationship. I need to be in love. I need to have a family. I need to do this. So how do I fall in love? How, how do I get people to love me? Because internally, I don't like myself. Internally, I'm, I'm battling with myself. Internally, I'm battling with a strong dislike for myself. So I'm, I don't think anybody can like me. I don't think anybody can love me without becoming somebody else, without becoming this other person that you love and care about. So I'm trying so hard to make you happy. And then that's where the love bomb comes from. I'm trying so hard to make you happy, so hard to get you to love and care about me because I don't think I'm worthy of love. I don't think I deserve love. So I'm trying so hard to get it from you. You know what I mean? I'm trying so hard to give it to you. And then eventually, like, <laughs> it gets hard to get, it, it gets hard to keep up that facade. It gets hard to keep up that, that persona. So I think the common term that people use is the, the mask slips. And then we become who we always been. We become the normal person that we don't think people like and people care about. So we start to devalue you. We start to treat you badly. And you know it too. You feel it. You're like, damn, this is not the same person I met. This is not the person that met, swept me off my feet. And you try so hard to get that feeling back. Like you try so hard to get that person back. Like you try so hard to get that person. Like we can do. So we, you, you're trying so hard to get that love and affection back that you got in the beginning. That we can do a lot less to make you happy. You, you will accept a lot less from us because now you can, at least you get in a little bit of love. And I, I think that's called bread crumbing. We can give you a little, we can give you a little bit to make you feel a lot. We can just say, damn, you look good today. And that will just set you off. You're like, damn, he's back to normal now. He's complimenting me again and things like that. And that's, <laughs> that's how the relationship goes. Um, <laughs> so let's get back to like when I first meet somebody else, like when I first meet a, uh, another man that could be a friend. I'll first meet like a girlfriend's her best. I meet her best friend's boyfriend, something like that. I'm always over analyzing that person. Like if it's a man or if they're in a, in a, in a homosexual relationship, anything like that, uh, bisexual, whatever they have going on, I'm always comparing and contrasting myself to that person. Of, of like, and I want to know that person's weaknesses and strengths, just in case, just to protect myself. You know, I, I want to know what makes that person, what, how I can hurt that person. So I'm meeting somebody. I'm sizing him up. I was like, okay, is he better looking than me? If he is, I'm like, okay, well, what, what do I have on him? Is he taller than me? If he is, what else? Do I, what can I get on him? Can I beat his ass? If you mean, if I think I can't beat his ass, then like, do I do I make more money than him? Um, I I have to find some kind of I mean, I have to, I have to find some kind of insecurity of his to to make myself feel better or hers to make myself feel better about myself and my situation. And also, like I said, also to protect myself, just in case we get into an argument later on or something like that, I need to have something to hurt you. I need to have some, I need to be able to get the upper hand on you. I don't like going into friendships and relationships where I don't have an upper hand to hurt that person in some way, shape, or form. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't like that. I don't like going into something empty handed, uh, for lack of a better term. So I need to find some way, shape, or form to, you know what I mean? Just to, protect myself. It's all about protection and just, you know, covering up insecurities in my own, my own brain and my own thought process that I, you know, it's crazy how it works. It's, it's, it gets tiring, y'all. It's so, t doing it for so long, being, trying to be somebody else for so long, it gets, you know, it does get extremely, extremely, like, tiring. And 
you don't want to do it. You know what I mean? You don't want to. You don't want to have to keep doing it. But like we, we press forward. We keep. We try to become somebody else. We try to be a, a better person. We 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 lift weights to get stronger. We go to school to get smart. So I'm I can go, I lift weights so I can be stronger than you. My body can be better than yours. I go to school so I can be smarter than you. So I can make more money than you. You know what I mean? I work hard. You know what I mean I'm just trying to be different. And you know I've always said that like my goal overall is to be the best. Like, I know it sounds weird. It's gonna sound super narcissistic. But my goal has always been to be the best narcissist possible. Okay, y'all bear with me. I'm opening this drink real quick. I know this is my throat is parched. <laughs> oh, I need to get sorry. So yeah, when I first meet somebody, it's always it, it's always intel gathering because I need to protect myself some way, shape, or form. I need to be able to hurt that person, not intentionally. I mean, I don't want to hurt them. I don't want to like go into it and be like I'm gonna hurt you tomorrow. It's always just, just in, it's always just in, just in case you say this to me, I need something to say to you that's equally bad. I need to know if you like, if you cheated on your ex. I need to know if you cheated on this, if you if you hit her or you. I, mean, I need to know some. I need to know. I need to have something. And if I can't get anything, then I don't want to be around that person ever again. You know what I mean? If they, they if they have if they one up me in every single aspect of life. That I don't want to be around that person. That's make me feel super insecure. So I don't ever want to see that person again in my life. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know it sounds weird, like, but like the way my mind works is such like it's all about data collection and intel and things like that. So sooner or later, it'll all come to fruition. You know what I mean? But that's always been the goal: is to be the best narcissist. No, I know it sounds dark and stupid as hell, but like that's how I have to deal with my existence nowadays. But anyways, y'all, this is getting a little long, so I'm gonna cut it short. I gotta go upstairs and go sleep. So thank y'all for tuning in. I really, really, truly appreciate it. Um, you can find me on TikTok at Mental Illness, just Mental Illness straight up forward. On Instagram, Mental underscore Illness. Somebody, some random, some random person has Mental Illness on there, and I hate it. I'm just like, <laughs> she got like five followers, and I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> but I also have a Facebook page and everything like that. But like. Just add me in, like I said, Snapchat is I ham the two M's, legend, I H A M M L E G E N D. Add me on Snapchat. Find me on there. Find me on, like I said, find me on YouTube. Subscribe, like, and subscribe to here. And then, of course, the podcast. I'm podcasting at the same time. So y'all see these little phones in there. Anyways, y'all, thank y'all for tuning in. I really do love and appreciate y'all so much. Uh, Till next time, peace.